This demo covers cohort modeling, which is a very important concept for technology and media customers. We see these models pop up a lot of times uh, in B2C uh, companies, so whether that's gaming uh, companies where customers have uh, in-game transactions uh, over time, uh, or potentially uh, grocery delivery subscriptions or ride sharing where there's activity and transactions uh, that uh, customers undertake. Um, and we also see it uh, even in the B2B side uh, where enterprise software uh, companies have uh, contracts that are consumption-based or potentially have ramping or escalations in them, uh, or where customers have um, complicated revenue uh, recognition patterns that they're trying to model. In the example we've got here, which imagines a consumer internet company, we've got a forecast summary in the upper left, which uh, shows how they think about their top line build and two supporting schedules underneath that we'll dive into uh, in a minute that uh, handle a lot of the modeling, and a chart on the right uh, that lets us uh, look at weekly active users uh, across the different platforms. So if we dive into the forecast summary here, we can see a list of accounts and metrics along the left-hand side that show how they think about their top-line build. So it starts with a marketing spend, which drives a set of installs. Uh, those installs then convert into registrations. And then the registrations uh, pile up uh, into weekly active users. And it's this last step, the translation between registrations and weekly active users, um, that we're going to use the cohort modeling, because uh, those are going to pile up on a weekly basis and then degrade over time. And as you can see, they think about all these metrics across uh, a couple of different dimensions. So uh, what platform is driving it, uh, as well as the channel, so Facebook, Instagram, etc. And this works like a big pivot table. So if I drag a uh, channel down here onto weekly active users, you can see it pivot around. And now I'm looking at the totals across the different uh, channels. And if I look out here, and this will be important in a minute, uh, uh, out a few weeks, I can see by week sort of three and four, I'm getting up to north of 50,000 users. So if I head back to the main dashboard here and click on the supporting schedule below, you can see how the waterfall builds up. In week one, I've got uh, the first cohort begins, uh, and then there's just the single entry. Uh, and if I move over a week out, I can see that initial cohort degrades slightly, uh, and then a new uh, week one cohort piling on top, and, and so on and so forth as you move uh, over towards the right. And if we close this back out and head down to our last schedule here, uh, we can see the actual retention curves which are driving this. That initial cohort that comes in in, in week one in early January, uh, drops to 90% uh, in week one, then down to 80, 79, so on and so forth uh, as it degrades. And then each cohort uh, in the subsequent week follows a similar pattern. And this model uh, imagines just a single set of curves uh, changing uh, by week uh, across the entire business, but this could easily be a cube sheet where uh, I break out different ones for different dimensions, platforms, channels, etc. Okay, so now time for a little what if analysis. Uh, and if I highlight uh, a set of uh, initial weeks here, I can make a simple adjustment. Uh, in this case, uh, maybe we want to take them down uh, 20%. And if I save this change and then head back uh, to my dashboard, um, I'll see all of that uh, impact reflected. Uh, whereas I was originally around 50,000 uh, users in week four, I'm, I'm down to 41. So I hope that was helpful for understanding how cohort modeling uh, can be accomplished in workday adaptive planning.